For the first time since cannabis legalization, we're getting a, an idea about how much money Canada's big marijuana companies are raking in. Edmonton-based Aurora Cannabis turned a $104 million profit in its last quarter. That's up a whopping 2,800% from a year ago. The company's selling over 2,600 kilograms of cannabis. That's almost 6,000 pounds, up more than 200%. The company's CEO said uh, the uh, commencement of adult consumer use sales in Canada has been very successful for Aurora, and it's been reported that Aurora Cannabis has been the top seller at OCS so far, accounting for about a third of all the online sales here in Ontario. And we're outside the legislature. Yes, we are. With and Cynthia Mulligan. Yes, Hello. and we missed Richard so much on our business chats at 5.30 that we brought you back with a new segment of, of different chats. So exciting. We're going to talk the most interesting stories of the day. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit of Queen's Park. Because we both lots... spend a lot of time here at Queen's and Park And there's now. no shortage of news at Queen's Park. No, multiple stories. So we were both here today and there was a lot of talk about cannabis and yes. how the government now says that the cannabis store is caught up. They say everything's hunky-dory when it comes to online sales. Um, minister Vic Fidelli, the finance minister, said uh, the backlog is gone. And so when you order pot now online, you should get it between one and three days. What Mr. Fidelli wouldn't say, though, is which company is running the warehousing operations for this uh, OCS. Take a look at what the minister had to say today. There is a, a private company that is running the warehouse and uh, uh, that is a, a private contract that is uh, uh, in place today. This was started uh, long before the election and so uh, we'll have more answers on that. Answer, but this is a, this is I don't understand. I don't understand the mystery here. And they also didn't say if the tender went out for the contract. That's an important point. Uh, did they make this open for other companies to bid, or did they just go with one company? It's Mr. Fidelli seemed to suggest there was no public tender. But he also said that it was the previous government behind it, and we asked the previous government, the Liberals. John Fraser, the Liberal leader. Let's see what he had to say. There's no reason that they've given that says we can't do this. Right? I, they haven't said anything. They haven't said, well, we can't do it for security reasons or we can't do it. I don't think there's a valid reason for that not to be disclosed. Personally, I don't know who they are. Uh, I'm interested in hearing who they are. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and try to, try to find out in that process whether they were tended earlier or when it was awarded or how it was done. So there is a bit of a mystery here. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to hear more about it. The finance minister said he would have more to say on the subject. Going and forward, Cynthia. We'll keep asking. Indeed. Okay, American Airlines. Yes. This is a really interesting story that you've dug up, and they're putting some passengers to work. So get this. If you have a nut allergy, like a lot of people do, and you're taking an American Airlines flight, they fly in and out of Toronto every day, they're going to lay you on the plane before everyone else, Cynthia, to wipe down your seat and wipe down your tray table. Is that a good idea, do you think? I don't know, but it, you know what? It actually makes me question how dirty is everything? Like, do they not wipe it down for everyone before you sit down? Well, we know the airlines are pretty dirty. In fact, the seat back pocket said to be the dirtiest. You know, America doesn't serve actual peanuts, but they do serve mixed nuts like a, a many airlines do. On Air Canada, they're not, not letting you in early, but they will create what they call a buffer zone around you. If you have a nut allergy, they won't serve any uh, anything containing nuts to the passengers around you, and they will warn them. So food safety is something airlines are taking serious, but I thought it was interesting. America said, hey, Go clean it up yourself. Well, and you need food safety. I mean, you don't want an emergency up in the in the sky. Not so. at thirty-five thousand. No. Okay. And another speaking of heights, another story you've dug up that's so interesting on how technology could actually save somebody in a fire yeah, one day. How drone technology uh, could save. So this is an idea out of uh, China, and it's called NetGuard. And the idea is, if there's a big fire or an explosion in a high-rise building, this drone would be alerted, and it would fly to the building in question. It, it would spread out a net. That would catch people, Cynthia, That's that amazing. fall or the jump. I wow. wouldn't want to be the first one. You'd have to be uh, in a pretty <laughs> serious situation to be doing yeah, that. But I wouldn't want to be the tester. No, and they no. haven't actually tested this in, in the real world yet, but it's an interesting idea. They've raised a couple of thousand dollars on this. A couple thousand. Just a couple I, thousand. I, I think they're working they have a on ways it. to go. <laughs> uh, drones aren't very good at lifting that sort of weight just yet, right. but they are going to change a lot of things that we do, including uh, building safety, perhaps. Fascinating. Richard, I'm so glad you're back chatting with so us. So glad to be back every day on the 5 and the 6. Wonderful. And now our next hour of City News begins right now.